All right, so you've put your house on the market. It's been sitting there. Maybe a couple people came by and looked at it, but it just hasn't sold. Well, it's the realtor's fault. Or is it? It's The Real Estate Show. Welcome to The Real Estate Show. My name's Rick Naples. I am the owner broker of Zone Realty LLC. You zone your home. On today's show, I'm going to talk about a very important subject and I need to be kind of cautious here because I don't want to give you the wrong impression and I also don't want to get fellow realtors upset at me. But the bottom line is, is not all houses sell. I mean, there's an old philosophy which simply says that there's a buyer for every single home out there, and that's true. But buyers are motivated by two things, opportunity and price. And if the price of the house is not right, perhaps a buyer will not go forward and make an offer on it. You know, a realtor will do a listing agreement with you, the seller, and usually the term is about six months long. And they do that for a number of different reasons. But the main reason is to give them enough time to start the momentum of marketing to be able to reach the widest group of buyers possible in the price range, in the area, and so on and so forth that are looking for a home like yours. But sometimes the house sits on the market and it just doesn't sell. Well, what I want to talk about is, is it necessarily the realtor's fault? You know, you may be thinking when you list your house that it's going to sell right away. When it doesn't, it's disappointing. Let's say, for instance, you've signed the agreement. The listing agent says they're marketing the home. Maybe a couple of people come by and take a look at it here and there. Realtor does a couple of open houses, which don't have a good turnout. And time is marching on and there's just no offers coming in to entertain on the home. So you start to think in your mind, what's going on? What is this real estate agency that I hired doing? Are they marketing the house? Are they getting exposure for my house? What are they doing? Did they just take paperwork from me and disappear? That's a subject that I talked about a lot of times on previous real estate shows about the communication between your realtor and you, the seller, and how important that is so you know what's going on. And also so the realtor can inform you of what's going on. So if you need to make adjustments, you can make the adjustments. But you start to think of different reasons as to why the realtor is not performing up to the expectation that you put forth when you first met with them. And you start to think, well, Maybe I just have a bad realtor. Maybe they don't know what they're doing. Maybe I should have signed with a larger franchise company with thousands of agents and hundreds of offices all throughout the country. Maybe they would sell my house. Maybe the opportunity for the agent is not there. So the agent is, for one reason or another, not interested in selling your house. Maybe the agent sells lots of houses, but he's not selling yours or she's not selling yours. Uh, because they don't believe in the property or whatever situation you may come up in your own mind. There are only two reasons why a house actually does not sell. The first one, of course, is price. As I said earlier, you know, you can sell any house anywhere at any time during the year in an up market or a down market. It doesn't matter. If the house is priced appealing to buyers, you're going to get offers. But you know, as sellers, you don't want to give your house away. You may have a mortgage you need to pay off. You may need money from the proceeds for your next purchase of your next house. So pricing becomes really important. And you know, it's when you have that meeting with the realtor to begin with, and you look at pricing your house, it's so important to listen to the information that they're able to provide to you so you can make a decision to put your house on the market at a price that buyers will be attracted to. 
as I said, sometimes we put houses on the market at the time, it looks like it's a good fair price, but you know right away within the first couple of weeks of a house being out there, if no one's coming to look at it, then maybe the price is a little bit too high and you have to adjust that. The other reason why your house doesn't sell is quite honestly exposure. Now, whether you list with a small company, a medium-sized company, a huge, large, nationwide franchise, or a worldwide franchise, they're still going to get you the same kind of exposure that everybody else does. And, and let me explain that. Realtors, when they become licensed and they jo join a brokerage, have access to a number of tools that are available to them in marketing the home. They're hired for their talents, their expertise, and their knowledge to get the information out to the widest range of potential buyers possible. But a lot of times, the realtors, when they go to use those tools, they use using the tools correctly, but they don't have the right property to market. Let's just say that. Maybe it's a property that needs a little bit of work, or the property has been priced in a price range where it's not offering some of the amenities that competitive houses are offering. I always run into a situation where I'll have a house that's got great square footage, great number of bedrooms and bathrooms, but it's missing a garage. And there's a couple other houses on the market that have a garage that are in the same price range. So buyers are migrating towards that house rather than the one that I have, for instance, that's listed. But again, to just reiterate, there are those two reasons, price and exposure. Now, of course, they go hand in hand because if the price is correct, the more exposure the house is going to get. And what I mean by that is when buyers go on the internet and they start to search for a home, if they're within a certain price range and that price range on the house is within the range they're looking for, obviously they're going to get a number of looks or possibly a number of people that are interested in coming out and taking a look at the house. Now, here's where it gets a little bit interesting and difficult to talk about. Realtors, as I said, are trained and have the experience and the knowledge to get your home sold. But sometimes there's a little bit of mistrust between the seller, you, and the realtor or agency that's listed the home. Um, a lot of realtors that are out there, and again, I'm trying to walk softly here because I don't want to insult my fellow realtors, but they go out and they brag about how many houses they've sold, they've sold them in XYZ amount of days, their company sells XYZ amount of houses per year, um, some of the big franchises put out these amazing statistics that they sell a house, so many houses every single month or week or day or hour or wherever it might be. Well, of course, when you're worldwide, those numbers are going to be there. Um, it just goes hand in hand. But whether you're dealing with a single broker who works for themselves, uh, a real estate agency that's a small agency with just a few agents or a large agency, you're really dealing with one individual. You're dealing with the realtor that you felt comfortable with when you hired them to get the job done in selling your house. And you also want to have a working relationship with that realtor. When you do decide on a realtor to list your home with, you want to pay attention to the information that realtor is sharing with you. And if your house is not getting an activity, it's not necessarily a lot of the realtor's fault. It could be that the house is just not priced or doesn't have the popular features that buyers in that area are looking for. So you want to be able to discuss or come up with ideas uh, and work with your realtor to make the house fit those ideals. Now, I'm not talking about investing a lot of money in the house, you know, upgrading stuff and redoing bathrooms and kitchens, although those things help, but you got to be cautious because you may not get the money back for that investment. But working with your realtor, 
There are a few sellers out there that literally dig their head in the sand. They don't care what their realtor is advising or has to say. They want this price for their house. This is what they're going to sell their house for. And they don't want to know nothing from nothing, no matter what the market is telling them. And unfortunately, that becomes an impasse between what the realtor is trying to do and what the seller wants. And you end up with a miscommunication, which makes it look like the realtor has failed to sell the house. Now, I'll share with you an interesting statistic, folks. When a realtor comes out and they list your home and they price it right and the house does not sell, you as a human being are going to blame the real estate agency or the realtor for not doing the job that you hired them for. And most of the time, you may decide in your own mind, I'm not going to work with them anymore. As soon as my contract expires, or maybe I'll contact the broker and say I want out of the contract, but as soon as I'm done with them, I'm going to go list with this guy who says he sells houses real quick, or list with this firm that has tons and tons of offices and thousands of agents. Because they're bigger, they'll do a better job for me, so on and so forth. And nine out of ten times, when you list with another agency, your house sells to support the idea that the first agency failed, you should have went with the second one because they got your house sold. Well, let's take a look at that. Most of the time, the reason why the house sells is because it's been on the market eight or nine months. You've come down in the price now with the new agency to a price that's more palatable to buyers out there and an offer finally comes in. So is it the new agency you signed with or the new agent you signed with? No, it's the timing. So what I'm saying is a lot of times if you list with an agency and the term of the contract is coming up, you might want to extend that contract. Because remember, that agency has already built up the momentum and set in place the marketing on your home. And although it's taking some time, your home will sell. It's just a matter of going beyond the time that the agency has listed your home with. Some agents out there, by the way, will ask you to sign a contract for a full 12 months. Here at Zone Realty, we really don't practice that, although we do do 12-month listings. We usually stand about the norm and do six months, so we're covering a couple of seasons. But some houses do take longer than others to sell. I relate it to the lottery. You always hear about the success stories. People buy a lottery ticket and they win. You always hear about the good stuff. You always hear about the successes. I've never seen any company anywhere, real estate agency or other firms, publish huge ads to the public saying, hire us, we fail. Hire us, we don't accomplish the job. Here's all our failures. Here's all the things that we could not do or we did not accomplish. It's always the positive stuff, correct? So sometimes you have to just look through all that and see what is smoke and mirrors and what is real. Maybe a real estate firm is selling a lot of houses because they tend to list houses far under market value. They do a lot of foreclosures or real estate owned properties with banks and they're under market value. So they generate a lot of numbers because investors come in and buy those homes. Or maybe not. All I'm saying is that it's not necessarily the realtor's fault. If you have good communication and you're working with your realtor, sometimes it's just a matter of time. And if you need to accelerate that time, well, you do it from the very beginning. You look at the market with your realtor. You look at competitive prices out there for homes that are like yours, not similar, but like yours, and you price aggressively so that you can attract the buyer to come to your home rather than go to other homes. Let's take a look at this little presentation that I put together, and this shares some of the statistics that the National Association of Realtors looked at when it just came to the real estate market. I found some of these numbers pretty interesting. Let's take a look.
talking here on the real estate show about it possibly being the thought of it being a realtor's fault when your house doesn't sell. And I thought I gave a pretty good explanation as to the number of the things that may happen when you put a house on the market and it doesn't sell. It's real easy to point the finger at the individual that you've put your trust in to accomplish a job that you expect them to accomplish. But there's an old saying, you know, there's nothing in the word realtor that gives the impression they're miracle workers. So if you're unrealistic in the pricing or if you're unrealistic in the timing, I once had a seller say to me, I'll give you a listing on my house, Rick, but you've got to get it sold in 15 days. Uh, and the price of the house was 30 grand higher than anything else like it out on the market. That's impossible. It's not going to happen, you know, unless the house is sitting on top of a gold mine or something like that. Um, so you need to be realistic. And going back to what I said, two reasons why the house doesn't sell, price and underexposure. You know, today with the internet, there's a ton of exposure out there. Uh, when a realtor lists a home, that home goes on the multiple listing service which shares through its agreements to all the other websites that are out there. So, I mean, it goes out to thousands of websites. It goes to Zillow and Trulia and, and all the big guys that are out there, home.com, realtor.com, just all kinds of sites. And through different agreements with the MLS, that for sale home appears on other sites, other realtor sites. In other words, if you list your home, let's say here, it's gonna appear on everybody else's website. So there's a lot of exposure through the internet. But the bottom line is unless a buyer is stopping and looking at that listing, looking at that ad, looking at that marketing and has enough interest because of the price or the amenities or what the house is offering, to want to go see it, you're not going to get the activity. Sometimes, as I said, it just takes time. Let's take a quick look at this little presentation. I'll be back with a portion of the show I call The Real Estate Mailbag.
This is the portion of the real estate show I call the real estate mailbag. It's my opportunity to address questions that are sent here to the real estate show or just make a commentary on the things that I'm talking about. In this show, I'm trying to be very cautious because I don't want to insult the fellow realtors that are out there. And I don't want to give sellers the impression that if a house does not sell within a contracted period of time, it's the realtor's fault. I'm not going to say that it's not the realtor's fault because there are some bad realtors out there. Believe me, I've worked with a lot of them and, and realtors will say there are good ones and there are bad ones out there. You know, realtors are people too. They come from all different backgrounds, all different types of education and so on and so forth. And some really know what they're doing and others kind of just muddle along. That's when you really need to interview realtors and really be comfortable with the person that you're going to place the largest investment of your lifetime with. My name is Rick Naples and this has been The Real Estate Show. I thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.